All right, before we get into the bulk of amino acid biosynthesis, there are some things that we really have to understand that don't occur in humans, but they're absolutely necessary for human function. Okay, what we're going to be talking about is the, is the nitrogen cycle. Okay, so nitrogen, we always have this idea that we, you know, we, we eat a steak and we get amino acids. Well, that's pretty easy. The amino acids are already made, but somebody had to put the nitrogen in a form where amino acids could be made from that. It turns out that nitrogen ultimately comes from the atmosphere. Now, probably in a general chemistry class, or if you've taken inorganic chemistry, you've seen dinitrogen. That's just diatomic nitrogen N2. It's two nitrogen atoms joined by a triple bond. Okay, That's this N2 shown right in the middle of the nitrogen cycle. It turns out that nitrogen from the atmosphere, N2, can undergo what is called nitrogen fixation. This arrow right here is going to be very, very important for our function because the way that we are ultimately, or and I'm going to say indirectly also, going to have to use the nitrogen is not in the form of dinitrogen as an N2, it's in ammonia, okay? Because the ammonia can then be made into amino acids, okay? N2 doesn't do any good for us. We need the nitrogen in the form of ammonia okay, indirectly, but hopefully that makes sense. And the process of going from dinitrogen to ammonia is called nitrogen fixation. And in general, the organisms, the list of them that do this process is very limited. The main ones that we're usually concerned with are Klebsiella, Azotobacter, and Rhizobium. And those are a lot of um, bacteria in the soil. And these bacteria are known to be obligate anaerobes. They don't like oxygen. They need to be in an anaerobic environment, and we'll talk about those in, a, in that in another video. But suffice it to say, they're in the soil, and so it's going to become very important to protect the soil because we want to protect these organisms because they, they give us the nitrogen that we need, so we need to kind of save them. However, ammonia does not just stay like that. It's either taken up by certain other organisms and converted to amino acids, or it's put right back into nitrogen, and that's done through a series of steps. It turns out there's a process called nitrification that can convert ammonia to nitrite, and then more nitrification can convert the nitrite to nitrate, and then nitrate can undergo a process called denitrification where it goes back into the atmosphere as N2. The latter processes that we just talked about, nitrification and denitrification, don't do any good for us. We really need to be thankful for these nitrogen-fixing bacteria because they give us the ammonia and the amino acids indirectly. So I just want to make sure this was clear. The nitrogen cycle is very important because we have a balance between taking nitrogen from the atmosphere and putting it into a usable form for us, but then there's other organisms that take that usable form for us and convert it back to atmospheric dinitrogen. We need to maintain that balance and not pollute the earth. All right, so what we really want to focus is that conversion of nitrogen, dinitrogen that is, to ammonia. It turns out its cat the conversion is catalyzed by an enzyme called nitrogenase. And I have here an exercise in activation energy. This is an unusual uh, reaction. The net reaction is shown up here. Notice one molecule of nitrogen, dinitrogen, will be converted to two ammonias. However, it requires 16 ATPs to do this. So for the organisms that do this, as in Azotobacter, Klebsiella, etc., uh, this is an extremely energetically costly reaction, but they do it, and we should be thankful that they do it. So they have to burn 16 ATP to do this process once, and also they have to get a total of eight electrons from already activated molecules, okay? So let's be thankful that they do this. All right. So it turns out this occurs in several stages. Number one, we're going to have either a ferrodoxin or a flavodoxin. These are electron-carrying proteins, and they're going to pick up electrons from usually four CoA's and four pyruvates. Now, for the purpose of the bacteria, it's not as much of a waste for the 16 ATP because they get out four acetyl-CoA's. But the electrons are going to go into either ferrodoxin or flavodoxin. Then those electrons are transferred to an enzyme that is part of the whole enzyme complex. So it turns out nitrogenase 
has two parts of it. It has a dinitrogenase and a dinitrogenase reductase. The dinitrogenase on the bottom is the part that actually catalyzes the conversion of nitrogen to ammonia. The dinitrogenase reductase gives the electrons to dinitrogenase, if that makes sense. The electrons come to the reductase part through the ferrodox near flavodoxin. So in other words, dinitrogenase reductase is going to pick up electrons from ferrodox near flavodoxin. And it's going to be reduced then because it got an electron. It's then going to bind 16 ATP. Now, a lot of the ATP's function here is binding energy because it turns out this reaction is very unfavorable. Notice it has an activation energy over 900 kilojoules per mole. That's enormous for an activation energy. In fact, I think the exact value is about 940 kilojoules per mole. That's enormously high. So the ATP binding, the reason you have to have so much of it, is you're really trying to put some binding energy in there to lower the activation energy. Okay, So um, it, that ATP binding is actually very important. Once the ATP is bound, the dinitrogenase reductase can transfer electrons one at a time to dinitrogen. Okay? Once that ATP is bound, dinitrogenase reductase can transfer electrons one at a time to dinitrogenase. Okay? In which case, dinitrogenase reductase is going to be oxidized back to its oxidized form, and then that ATP is going to be hydrolyzed to um, ADP and phosphate. And you're back to no ATP bound, oxidized dinitrogenase reductase, which can then pick up more electrons from the ferrodoxin or flavodoxin. But back down here to the bottom, remember we had with ATP bound, dinitrogenase reductase transferred electrons to dinitrogenase. So now dinitrogenase is in the reduced state. And dinitrogenase is directly the species that transfers the electrons to nitrogen. Okay. So, it's going to take a total of eight cycles like this, eight electrons to totally reduce nitrogen to the two ammonias. So to completely get rid of an atmospheric dinitrogen, it takes eight electrons and 16 ATP. And that's partly because the activation energy is so massive. Okay. So just to do a quick recap, the dinitrogen gets its electrons from dinitrogenase. That gets its electrons from dinitrogenase reductase. That gets its electrons from either ferrodoxin or flavodoxin, which gets its electrons from pyruvate and coenzyme A. Okay, so this is another example of what we call an electron transport chain, but this particular one we don't do. This is not in us. This is only a nitrogen fixing bacteria, i.e. Klebsiella, Azotobacter, and Rhizobium. However, Again, I really repeat this, we should be very thankful to these bacteria that they're able to do this for us, okay? Because without this ammonia, then some organisms would not be able to make amino acids, and then we would not be able to eat them and get the amino acids, so we would all be dead. So yes, we're dependent on plants for oxygen, but another not really appreciated fact is we're also dependent on these bacteria for nitrogen, usable forms of nitrogen, that is. And that's another thing, we really need to protect our soil, and I'm not trying to give this little hippie, you know, tree hugger talk right here. But, I mean, if you really think about it, it's very important. If we were to somehow to pollute the earth enough to kill these bacteria, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria, we would be dead. So that's why I keep saying we need to be thankful for them because without them, we literally would die. Okay, so um, that's a talk about the nitrogen cycle and nitrogenase. In the next video, we're going to go over ultimately how we actually get the nitrogen and use it ourselves. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.